Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at the reproductive system, specifically with an emphasis on the ovary. So to get started, let's reorient ourselves to where we actually find the ovary. And to do so, we can look at this model on the right. So if you look here, this is going to be the pelvic region of a female body, which means that this is where you're going to see the digestive system, the urinary system, but then also the reproductive system as well. So to get started, like just to be clear and also kind of recap, like from the outside of the pelvic region, kind of towards the inferior aspect of the groin, that is where you're going to find the vaginal opening leading into the vagina. The vagina is then going to lead to this kind of muscular sac. This is called the uterus. And then the uterus is going to have a couple of tubes coming off of the sides called oviducts. So if you look closely, Coming off of the side of the ovary, this right here is called the oviduct. The oviduct is otherwise known as the fallopian tube, or sometimes known as the uterine tube as well. But this is the oviduct, which leads to the very tip of the oviduct, where you find these little finger-like projections called fimbriae. And that is finally where you get to see where the ovary is. So the ovary is right here, where you can see the gonadal arteries and veins connecting to it. So these blood vessels, those are going to be the gonadal or ovarian arteries and veins in this case, going to the ovary. Now the ovary is going to be a relatively small organ, and you can see that you would have one on the right, and then you would have one on the left, but this is basically the female gonad. And what gonad means is that this is the female reproductive organ, and this is where you're going to be producing the majority of the reproductive hormones such as estrogen and progesterone, but also this is where the cells of the female reproductive system will be found as well, called oocytes, or you may also know them as egg cells. So please call it oocytes though, but to kind of take a look at the specific parts of the ovary, we can see a very large blown up ovary right here. So that very small structure on the model is actually going to be this, and when you look inside of it, you can see a lot of different structures. So like I said, though, this is where you're going to find the hormone production, but also the reproductive cells, the oocytes. Now, when I say reproductive cell, remember, I mean like a one cell, which is going to be a very, very small thing. So if you look closely, there's a kind of a lot of big things, but that's because the oocyte is going to be supported by these other structures surrounding it called follicles. So in the middle of each follicle you'll find a single oocyte, but these follicles are going to be variable depending on what stage they're at. So to get started, let's take a look at like kind of these smallest ones kind of scattered throughout the ovary. So these small ones are going to be called primordial follicles, and remember in the middle of each of these primordial follicles that's where you find an oocyte. So if you look really carefully, you can see inside of there, that is the oocyte surrounded by a very thin layer. That is going to be the primordial follicle. And specifically, the primordial follicle will be composed of a single layer of squamous or flat cells, causing it to be very small. Now, in the ovary, like for any woman, they are going to actually be born with all of the follicles that they'll have throughout their life. Like after embryonic growth, like a woman does not make any more egg cells or oocytes or follicles. They're just going to use the follicles that they have. And generally every month, a few of them will start to develop with one of them releasing the oocyte during ovulation. So let's kind of see like what leads up to that, though, as maybe a few of these will start to develop into the next stage, which from primordial, you'll then go to primary. So once again, the oocyte is still very small inside, but this is now a primary follicle. So the primary follicle is going to be a little bit larger, but what you can notice here is that the, the shape of the cells has changed. You still have a single layer, but this is now a single layer of cuboidal cells. So you had squamous cells over here, you have cuboidal cells over here, and this is going to make it a little bit larger, but... This is going to allow these follicles to kind of start their developmental process. Now, this actually does take a quite a long time to go from pri primary to the rest of the stages, but basically, 
a couple of these every month are going to start to develop even further. So this is going to be the primary follicle. And then during the menstrual cycle, you then have a few of these develop into larger ones. This next one is called the secondary follicle. Now, what do you notice regarding the secondary follicle? You can see that there is now more than one layer. There's two or more, I believe it's like two to eight layers of cells. But furthermore, you can see that there's this kind of like blackened region right here. Okay, so it's not supposed to be like a blackened region, but this is supposed to be indicating a space filled with fluid. This is called an antrum. So when you have an antrum like this, this is when you would have a secondary follicle. And then really, maybe only one of these secondary follicles really gets going. And that is the one that's then going to lead to ovulation. But before that, you have what's called the tertiary follicle. So the tertiary follicle is this one, otherwise known as the mature or graphene follicle. This one you can see is gigantic. And furthermore, you can very clearly see the large space inside of it now. This is a very large antrum, which is going to be surrounded by those multiple layers of cells. So this is a tertiary follicle, but what do you see coming out of the tertiary follicle? This is now the oocyte. So when the oocyte is released from the follicle, and furthermore, outside of the ovary, this is called ovulation. So the oviduct and the fimbria are then going to pick up this oocyte to bring it towards the uterus for potentially a fertilization event that is going to lead to, well, a baby. So typically that fertilization event will occur in the oviduct, and then it's going to kind of implant into the uterus. Now furthermore, though, what else do you see in here? Like you can see that you have those different follicles, but one thing that you should notice is that this follicle didn't leave. It was only the oocyte that left. So if you look over here, you can see after an oocyte leaves, so you can see that little hole here, that follicle is actually going to continue to develop. And that development will be turning this structure, or the tertiary follicle, into what's called a corpus luteum. So you can see the corpus luteum in yellow over here. Corpus luteum is going to be an active structure that is going to be producing a hormone called progesterone, and that is going to allow you to potentially keep a pregnancy. Now, if you do not get pregnant, which is the most of the case, you'll actually develop another structure, or this corpus luteum will turn into another structure, called corpus albicans. So if you remember alba from any other structures like linea alba, like you might know that alba means white. So in this case, you can see these various white structures throughout the ovary. Those are the corpus albicans. So the corpus luteum is the, is the yellow body. The corpus albicans is the white body. And basically, from every menstrual cycle, like you'll have at least one of these follicles going through this process going from primordial to primary to secondary tertiary ovulation, and then corpus luteum. And for each corpus luteum, you then have a corpus albicans. Now, there's also a little bit to talk about the oocyte itself as well, because so far we've just known that you have an oocyte like in each of the follicles, but the oocyte actually goes in its own stages as well. So basically, to put this in very kind of simple terms, there's two levels of cellular division that occurs in a gonad, or rather a reproductive cell. That's meiosis in one and meiosis two. So this is going to go kind of in a start and halted process where it's going to stop when it gets to a primordial follicle. And within the primordial follicle, all the way to primary and secondary follicles, the oocyte is going to be stopped in what's called the primary oocyte stage. So all of these in the primary, secondary, and primordial follicles are primary oocytes. But after the secondary follicle, as you get into the tertiary follicle, this oocyte is now going to be called a secondary oocyte. So in this case, one of those stages of meiosis has continued to allow it to turn into a secondary oocyte. So primary oocytes inside of these, this one is the secondary oocyte. Now, furthermore, one more thing to also talk about is a couple of structures that are going to be surrounding 
the O side as well. And just to kind of recap, let's take a look at what we have here first. The smallest. These are going to be primordial. So primordial follicles, primary follicle, secondary follicle with the antrum inside, tertiary follicle, which undergoes ovulation, which you can also see the secondary oocyte here, corpus luteum, corpus luteum, but that corpus luteum is now regressing into a corpus albicans. And then furthermore, you have your oviduct with your fimbriae and parts of your ovarian artery and vein as well. But the part that I wanted to focus on here is actually right here. Like if you look closely, this is actually a super big oocyte. Like <laughs> this is not what an oocyte looks like. This is what an oocyte typically looks like, but this is going to allow you to see a few things. So this is going to be the oocyte. You can see some intracellular material in there, but surrounding the oocyte, you have two things. You have the zona pellucida, which is going to be like a proteinaceous layer surrounding the oocyte, but then you also have this other layer of cells surrounding it called the corona radiata. So the corona radiata, as well as the majority of the follicle, will be made up of what's called granulosa cells. And you can see all those little granulosa cells in there. So with that said, though, that's about it for this video. Please make sure that you are careful with looking at the different stages of the follicle, as well as the different stages of the oocyte. So with that said, good luck with your studying. I'll see you all next time, and thanks for listening.